Hello and welcome to another week in our very, very sunny dry garden. Now we're going to start up in the top greenhouse just to show you that I've been to the garden centre and I've bought some plants for the hanging baskets which will start next week so we'll do the hanging baskets in the next video but while I was there I had a good look round like you do in the garden centre um, very impressed with it by the way very nice stock now anybody who has lost their vegetable plants or are behind with the vegetable plants especially in the UK where we've had some wicked frosts there's what I did notice what there's lots and lots of vegetable plants in the garden centre I was quite impressed so if you lost them by the frost or if you're running behind go and get some Make sure the bin grown in peat though, not soil. I'll just show you what we bought while we were there. Not awfully expensive, but they're very nice plants. Now, if you can see here, there's lots of bacupa there, but we're actually going to propagate that today as well, because there's not enough there for what we will want. We've got some begonias, very difficult to grow from seed. We used to grow it, but we don't now. There's an odd one missing, but that's that's fine. A few impatiens, again, you can grow them from seed, but we're too busy with the vegetables to grow them, so it's easier to buy them. While we was at the supermarket on Thursday, I saw these ivy leaf geraniums there. Nice big pots and lovely plants so I couldn't resist getting I think it was four or four different colours very nice plants very reasonable this is the one I'm going to take the cuttings off it's been overwintered in this pot it's a bit tatty but there's loads and loads of foliage on it for me to get the cuttings so we'll do that down at the shed where it's a little bit cooler as well now we'll come down to the shed and it looks like I've got the sunny side of the table today. Now, somebody mentioned on the blog yesterday that the swallows have got down to the south coast. And I said, well, we haven't got them here yet. And this morning, believe it or not, we've got one here. In fact, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's chirping above us now. So it's arrived and it's saying hello. That's not, that's something else. If you just take one cut in and put it in there, it will take an age to fill, fill up for the pot. So what we're going to do, we're going to do them in threes. So I'm using the fine secateurs just to take them off. It's a lot easier. You don't need a lot to take a cut in of these. Take that one there, look. A little bit of length on them. And then we'll use these secateurs. You can use a knife if you want, but it's just as quick with these, just to take those flowers off. It doesn't matter the odd flower if you leave them on, you won't get them all off anyway. Get a good stem, cut below a node, just touch the water with it. Touch the powder, rooting powder, any will do, but you can get an organic one if you wish. And then we put them into the cell. It's just ordinary potting compost and it's got some vermiculite mixed in with it. Push them a little bit deep. It has been pre-watered, so it should be damp enough while we take the cutting. Then we'll put another one there and another one there and will fill up quickly. Some are a bit small, but that's you should be able to do those. Oh, that's better. And there, look. Now there's not much chance of getting these two flowers off, so I'll leave them. And we'll just take that below that node, look, and just trim that leaf a little bit. That's got it. Same again. 
in the water in the powder and then we'll put it in that hole there nice and snug now, I will put these in the propagator but you can just put one of those clear covers over the top to keep it warm and they'll soon root. Quite a fiddly job but well worth it. And just there look, we'll take that flower and that leaf off there and that leaf. Can't get that flower, it's too tight. Or oh, might be able to get it now, look. There it is. Trim the bottom nice. In the water, in the powder, and then into there. Just make sure there's contact with the compost and make sure they're not hanging in a hole, else they'll just dry out. We'll do another cell to show you how it's very easy really. It's just finding the getting the stems. That's got a double there, so we don't really want that one. That one's a good one, not there's two on there, so we want one more. And that's it. We'll start with this one. Rather delicate way, the ladies will be very, very good at this. Now you're not going to get that took there. You're not going to get every leaf off, so it doesn't really matter if you leave a few on the leaves. As long as you keep them moist, they'll be fine. You can see how tiny that cutting is, but it'll soon root. In it goes. And there it sits. Let's see if we can get two more bigger ones so you can see them. There you go then. That was a bee flying through. If we go right down here, look, we might just be able to get it. There we have. Take those off. These are actually the vine insectiers, but they make a good job of this. And in it goes. In threes and that will be fine. There will be a little bit of bottom heat in the propagator so they'll soon root. And I think they're, they're very nice in the summer bedding because not a lot really bothers these. The aphid doesn't seem to like them. And as you can see this is flowering now and that will flower more than that for the rest of the summer. And in they go. Now Diane had to nip up and see somebody so I actually finished one of the trays. So we'll just spray it down with the mister and then we'll put in the prop. spray and I'll do this maybe two or three times a day even though they're in the propagator just keep those tops moist and they'll root very quick I have pre-wet the compost so the compost is wet enough but you just want to keep those leaves nice and moist so they don't start drying out I'll put this in the propagator and I I think we're we'll going to try some carrots. Now I did manage to get the potatoes in last week. I've got four rows in each plot and I've ridged them up ready. If nothing else it might just draw a bit of moisture up from below but I'm going to put the irrigators on soon anyway. Diane will show you what I did. Now, I did have a few left, we'd bought a few more than what we wanted, so I've put them in two buckets and put them outside the greenhouse. They're, 
Nicola and their second earlies. Now I'm going to pop a few early carrots in. Now when we was in the supermarket I was looking at the seed and I saw this and I thought well for the few pence that they're going to cost we'll try them. They're uh, Charisma, they are a F1, F1 hybrid. Normally when you put your carrots in you make a nice line and then you spread them out. I'm going to do mine a little bit different to that. I've got a bit of seed in hand. Can you see between there and there I've drawn I've drawn the rake through a few times. I've been watering this for about a week now and I've got this line here that's the rake width so instead of putting them in a single line I'm going to sprinkle them along. The because I've been watering all week there's a trillions of seedlings coming up from goodness knows what so there'll be a nightmare to keep clean but I'll sort that. So what I'm going to do is take a little pinch and I'm going to go just between those and then they're thinner than what I would do down the line. Remember where you were. Just I find that easier, make a line. Yes, excuse my shadow, it's the sun is very low today, this time of year. But that should Right, I'll go to that then and then I'll show you what I do next. Now I've scattered the seed down that wide line and I'm going to gently rake them in and then water them and cover them with a fleece and see if we can grow them that way instead of doing them in the lines. Just covering the seed. Just a gentle rake. Obviously any stones, we'll have to take those out now. Else they'll be, we'll be getting funny shaped carrots, if we get any. I think we will. And just, just burying them that little bit with the rake. Very gently. This is going to be the trouble lot. With water in it, in this warm weather, there's a lot of weeds germinating in it. But we'll clear them. There you go, right to the end. Now, I'll just water them in. I've put a, a broad rose on so it spreads the water out a little bit. You see, and then it's not if I go quite low, it'll take one or two passes to do it, but we'll get there. Keep it low, and it'll be fine. And this is actually washing those seeds in now as well. Right up to the edge and then back again. We'll do one more pass and that should do this. There you go, that's lovely and wet. As I say, I've been watering it for a week and it's, uh, it's, at least it's wet underneath as well. This is the fleece I'm going to use. It's actually a cover for a tree. It's double the thickness of your normal fleece. I find that if we use the lighter fleece, a bit of wind and they just tear and they're gone. So we'll use this and put it on. It might be a bit too long but I shall pin it for now.
don't matter if it's over that but I don't want it double on them yeah because I'll put some more in there it'll look better when I get I should put two in this side and then two in that side as well, just hold it steady. That will keep the early morning frosts off and it will shade the seeds from the sun a little. The only thing is every morning and every evening I'll have to come down, just turn the cover back and water them and then cover them up again. Especially in the evening, not so much in the morning, if it's frozen like it has been for the last week, then I should just leave them until the frost is gone and then I'll walk. Now we'll nip down to the bottom greenhouse and I'll show you how the rhubarb's coming along because I do believe there's some flowers coming up that we need to take off and then we'll pop our heads in the greenhouse and show you the progress in there. This is the rhubarb, there's two rhubarb, well I think there's more than two in there. Very very old variety been in the garden forever I do believe the only problem with these old varieties they will send a flower spike up very early there it is look that's the flower spike coming up the trouble is if they get flowering too much or if the flower at all really it tends to take the sweetness of the rhubarb off so if you take the flowers off you tend to get a better quality rhubarb so we just follow it down can you see look down there follow this all the way down this is on it as well so that might come off when I pull it out likewise one this side look the whole thing here that I've got hold of I will try and rip out best I can it's a two-hand job and quite a pull but it's well worth it all right here we go that's it it's broken off well down so we're all right there's the flower you can see it, it's beginning to beginning to show look there we don't want flowers on the rhubarb go on the compost eat them we'll have a quick look around there's bound to be another one somewhere here it is so there's another one look Can you see that one? Okay. Can you see this one? This one's the same, it needs taken out. And if you just pop a quick peep in there, the rhubarb is doing very, very nicely. We'll be picking this soon. But we need to get these flowers off. Same way, if there's a piece of rhubarb with it, take it all and rip it out. It's come out well. 
there's another one in the other route so same again down the bottom and give it a good pull if it's got a rhubarb stalk on it take that as well and a good rip off and you take it off right at the root and it comes out nice it's no good trying to keep these because that would be very bitter a quick glance and there's another one here so we'll take that one as well there's another one beginning to form there as well look whether that's a leaf no that's definitely a flower as well we'll let it come up a bit so we can got something to pull on but this one can definitely come out same again there's a stalk on it so get the lot and oh it's got it take the lot it's four there I should just get the knife and just chop them into the compost and they'll rot down in days. As and when we get some rain, this will shoot up. It's very, very deep rooted, so it's not affected as much as the younger plants when there is no rain. But as soon as you get the rain, my goodness, it grows well. The broad beans we set last week I haven't watered them this morning because it was very very frosty so I thought the best left till evening and then I'll give them a drink so they can soak up at night now everything in the mesh frame is doing very very well I do prop them open in the day then cover them with a the fleece at night because it's still very very cold I think the first things we'll be putting in with the looks of it will be the Brussels sprouts the mini coal cabbage the broccoli and the cauliflowers the onions we'll put in as soon as we, we can get the the soil on the onion bed damp and friable can't put them in there it's far too dry there's my two buckets of potatoes i'm not very good at potatoes in pots so we'll have to see how we go with that one i'll let them come up and then i'll top the pots up i'll just show you how the celery and the tomatoes are doing they're doing quite well these are cocktail crush so they're showing quite well we have some lettuce, that's the uh, cylindrical beetroot coming up now. That will be put straight in the garden as soon as it gets a bit high on it. The onions, they were the weakest of the onions, they're coming up nicely. They're the plum tomatoes, they're doing very well as well. The uh, peppers, all doing well. The yellow peppers have, seems to be doing rather well. But the Mountain Magic tomatoes and the Mountain Merit are not doing so well. Whether they'll suddenly grow on the Cocktail Crush and the Plum variety, we're all put in the same time as these and they're romping away. And these are just dragging the feet a little, but there's plenty of time, there's no rush. I think it's the gardener wanting them to grow faster than what they are doing. Temperature in here today is 32 and it went down to 11.9 last night even though outside was white over with frost this morning. The idea is these walls warm up and they feel quite warm now. The thing about this little greenhouse is in the daytime although it's 32 now it feels quite cool because of the fans moving the air and the vents are all open the wall actually warms up it actually feels warm to the touch and then when the sun's gone down the heat radiates out of the walls and keeps it warm so last night it would it must have been minus something because it was white over outside and yet in the air we only got down to 11.9, which is very, very good. We do cover them up. These we've got covered are all the beans and the peas. I cover them up with a fleece just to stop them drying out. Nothing's happening or coming up yet, nothing to show you. 
dry out too fast and then they won't germinate so I wasn't going to water them until they came up but it got so warm in here I did water them I think twice now since I planted them just to keep that moisture in that compost and I'm expecting them coming up in the next few days got all the seeds that we showed you last week they're all in I also put the marigolds in what we put between the rows etc to keep green fly down they're in and they've germinated very very well I'll have to now go through my seed box to see what I've missed there's bound to be something I haven't put in but I really need to go through it properly when I go through the seed box if I've got any sun gold tomato seed left I'll set that now so we've got a very very late crop coming through and the idea we did last year was we picked them all green and we put them on these benches on some newspaper and they went right to the beginning of November we were still coming down and taking red tomatoes off the benches good idea keeps the season going a bit thank you for watching thank you for subscribing we do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week by the way i forgot to tell you we had our second covid injection yesterday didn't feel a thing no after effects enjoy yourselves take care bye now